Today's episode is brought to you in cinematic 24p. Ooh, uh, wait. That's a lot better. About one year ago I started this vlog to explain what I'm doing and I realized that I didn't really do explain what I'm doing. There's this question I get asked pretty frequently, it's do you do mapping? Well, yes I do, but it's the same like asking me do I do cutting? Only because I'm familiar with one of the basic skills for cooking, it doesn't make me a great chef. There's also a lot of other knowledge and skills that you have to bring into the business to be a great chef. Same goes for mapping. Mapping is just the foundation of what we do in projection art. So to do good projections, it's useful to know about mapping and to know how it's done. But that doesn't really count. While I'm waiting to see one of the unavoidable mapping shows at Stuttgart's Theater Rampe, it's time to explain something about the foundation of mapping. It was when Thales from the Greek city of Milet discovered that two parallel lines that cross two lines that have one origin actually form the same ratio between length of the smaller one to length of the bigger one as the length ratio between the crossing point of the long one and the crossing point of the short one. So did you understand that? doesn't really matter. It's part of most mapping softwares that are being sold nowadays, so don't bother. It's only used to calculate the four-point corner pin that we will be using for our first example. Mapping is often described as the technique of positioning a dedicated pixel on a physical space in a projection. But that's not all accurate. Actually, it's more like knowing where all the pixels are and knowing how to address them. You will find out that the ratios are an important thing in mapping. You might want to be sure that the ratio measured in real life is the ratio that you set when you create your footage. Let's continue in After Effects to simulate the process of mapping. For something as planar as this sample, you can use a simple corner pin to just pin the corners of your footage to the corners in real life. It should actually fit. You might want to have something that you can relate to in real life. Squares is a good idea. If you're mapping on something bent, most software offers a Bezier curve mesh, which you can actually use to bend your footage to whatever is there. All those mappings are pretty simple because they are done on something rectangular with four corners and only bent in one dimension. It's getting a little more difficult if you try to map on something like this. The first thing you might have noticed about this concrete bowl is concave. So already now our projector is dropping a huge shadow. We have to find a new position for the projector. Let's pretend we build a object-based mapping with an orientation to an audience. So our audience would look at the object from this side. Now after adjusting our projector towards the form, we light all the form, we have no shadows inside and we just light enough of the outside to give some texture and other information to the outside. This should be the perfect setup for a mapping on a form like this. Concave, but without any shadows. And this is where the actual problem comes in. How should we map on this? There is no way we're going to form something with a few mouse clicks. This is where a scanner comes in. For objects of this size, we'll use a simple Kinect and a program called Scanect. For huger objects, like a whole skate park for example, you might use something called photogrammetry. You take literally hundreds of photos of an object from every angle 
and then you stitch them together to a 3D object that can be used in any mapping software. Let's continue in After Effects to pretend we're using a system that is actually mapping using a virtual camera. We put our 3D camera in After Effects where our projector is sitting in relation to the object we're mapping on. And this is where it becomes really difficult. You have the focal length of your camera, either the real one that you're using to film or the virtual one that you're using in your 3D software. Then you have the focal length of the virtual camera in your mapping system. Then you have the focal length of the virtual camera that you're maybe using as a point of view of your projector. And you have the focal length of your projectors in real life that you can't determine because you only have the ratio for the projection. The ratio of the projection lens is given in distance to the object you're projecting on and width of the image. In this case, from one meter distance, I'll get a 68 centimeters image. So divide one meter by 68. And I get a ratio of 1.47. So theoretically, at one meter and 47 centimeters, that projector should make an image that is one meter wide. And that seems good enough. You might want to ask, why do I measure the ratio of a projector that I just bought? So most times, when you use bigger projectors and they have a zoom lens, you can't really determine what ratio you're at. It's a wide range in which you can be. In a theatre, you might want to measure the distance between the lens and your main area to project on. Mostly, it's the opening of the stage. So measure that, measure the width of the image that you achieve there, and you have the ratio that you're going to work with. Now this doesn't seem like a big achievement, but still it's a UV mapping on a concave form. And now for a 3D effect for the audience, we should actually move our virtual camera inside the mapping software using from this position to the audience position. And this is where the problems start because not everybody's sitting in the same spot. Also, virtual cameras sometimes introduce something called virtual shadows. It's areas that the virtual camera cannot define because of its angle. After all, projection mapping is just the foundation for the stuff that we call our content. Without great content, projection mapping remains a useless technical skill. 50 vlogs and still not one word about what I really do? <laughs> Subscribe if you want to find out. I'm getting there at some point, honestly.